Hey there and welcome back. This is Felix from Golda Matt Vintage Watches. Today we present you to three beautiful vintage watches that are different in themselves from the manufacturer Vacheron Constantin on the left, Universal Genève in the middle and Patek Philippe on the right. To the dial layout, movements, sizes and so on. But they all have one thing in common, the unusual battle design. These watch types were called Disco Volante or UFO. You will learn where the Disco Volante has its origin, what general Genta has to do with it and what makes these pieces so special to us. So enjoy the brief intro and dive in with us. My brother and I really appreciate when a watch brand thinks outside the box and try to design watches in an unusual way, but without losing its core design values. This is not only true for the current market, but especially for vintage watches. A classic, understated and simple round watch without a lot of bells and whistles is and remains the measure of all things for us. And yet, these three timepieces are more striking and fancy watches that simply take our breath away. Pieces that are just a bit more out of the ordinary and a bit different, which makes them even more charming in our eyes. But before we take a short look at each watch individually, we want to reveal to you what the name Disco Volante means and where this design type has its roots. But for this, we have to go a little further because the inventor of this case design is known other than Gerald Genta in collaboration with Audemars Piguet. For those interested in watches, there's no need to explain who Genta was. He was the most praised watch designer of all time, with a long and brilliant career in the 20th century. Pole Ruder, Constellation, Engineer, King Midas, Royal Oak, Naudilus, and so on. Designs that were classic in the one hand, but confronting in the other for the time, out of step with contemporary tastes, and yet very popular with collectors around the world in every decade from the 1950s through the 1990s and still today. According to his own estimates, he designed about 100,000 watches over the course of a half century. And so at first glance, the full range of his achievements in watchmaking is not immediately visible. These include the development of Disco Volante watches in cooperation with Audemars Piguet in the 1950s. In this decade, the focus of all watch manufacturers shifted from the formally functional to the aesthetic complications. The development of the ultra-thin wristwatch, which had already begun at the beginning of the 20th century, now gained traction. And companies began to devote significant resources to developing watches that were as thin as possible. So did Audemars Piguet with Genta's collaboration resulting in the reference 1593, the first watch to bear the name Disco Volante today. The name Disco Volante refers to the design of the watch case. Disco Volante means flying saucer in Italian and is a nickname used by the Italian watch collecting community for watches that have a wide bezel with a smaller than usual dial for the time. The particularly noteworthy thing here is that Genta managed to draw the attention from the dial, where it traditionally was, to the wide, sharp bezel. As you can see it here of an extract of AP's production books, he decorated it with a variety of patterns and ornaments. One can find examples with rows of machine turned Clou de Paris, decorated with precious stones of Florentine, and with a full range of precious metals. And this did not go unnoticed by other Swiss luxury producers for long, and they two began to experiment with the shapes of their bezel and case designs. Which brings us to our current Disco Volante triple. A Patek Philippe from the 60s, a Vacheron Constantine from the 50s and a Universal Genève also from the 50s. So let's start with a Patek reference 2594 from the 1960s. What is the first thing we notice when we hold this piece in our hands? Of course, a very thin profile with an unusual large design of the bezel and a smaller dial, which was unusual for the time. 
So as already mentioned, three clear design specs of a Disco Volante watch. On the inside of the case back, we find the key of Geneva stamp, also known as Poisson de Maître in French. So number two on this key tells us that the three body 18K yellow gold case with a snap-on case back was produced by the Geneva-based company F. Baumgartner, which produced watch cases for different Swiss watch manufacturers until the early 1970s. This case measures 32 mm without crown, 39 mm from lac to lac and a thickness of only 6 mm. Combining an ultra-thin profile with an eye-catching oversized bezel, this Patek gives an unusual large presence on the wrist despite its rather small size of 32 mm by today's standards. Disco Volante pieces were often adorned with a bunch of different finishes and decorative techniques from Florentine to engine turned hobnail pattern. Everything you can imagine was available. The classic hobnail pattern on our Patek is also known as Clou de Paris in French. Under the hood beats an manual wound Patek Philippe caliber 23300. As the caliber number indicates, it is 23 mm in diameter, 3 mm tall and was produced from 1956 until 1975. This compact size makes it ideal for the popular Patek Philippe Calatrava and similar smaller watches like the Ellipse and our today's Patek produced in the 1950s and 60s. This movement is greatly respected today with many saying it's one of the best hand-wound movements ever produced by Patek Philippe. The second beautiful watch of today's triple is a rosé gold Universal Genève, reference 100-108-1 from the 1950s. Here on the inside of the case back we find the so-called hammerhead stamp. So number 120 on the head of this stamp tells us that the three-body 18K Rosé Gold case was produced outside, not inside Geneva, by the company Gendro and Co, which produced watch cases also for different Swiss watch manufacturers until 1972. It measures 34.5 mm without crown, 41 mm from lac to lac, and is thicker as a Patek with 8.5 mm. It features an oversized textured bezel with an unusual date aperture at 6. A small sunburst silver dial with rosé gold alpha shaped hands. And believe me, I don't want to overstate, but for a watch under 35mm, it was huge. It feels more like 37mm or so. It's an absolute eye catcher. With this white flute bezel and radiating indices, and not to forget the date design at 6. So it's no wonder that this piece is a conversation starter at any event you will wear it to. That being said, it's by far the cheapest watch in our current selection, which I personally can't quite understand. But as always, the market sets the prices. The watch is running on the Calibre 138C bumper automatic movement, which was in production from 1948 to 1955. This movement is the first iteration of an automatic movement and was even used in the famous progress of this era. Last but not least, let's take a closer look at my personal favorite of today, an 18 karat yellow gold Bacheron Constantine, reference 4786, also from the 1950s. When I hold this piece in my hands, it simply leaves me speechless. So many details that it is almost difficult to mention them all. Hidden lux, stunning Clou de Paris bezel finishing, a silver dial with a brushed center and matching Clou de Paris chapter ring with applied indices, and a matching pencil handset with bluish colored seconds. This watch is simply a poem. On the inside of the case back, we also find the key of Geneva stamp with a number 5, which tells us that the case was produced by the Geneva-based producer Croissant Georges which produced watch cases from 1934 to 1991. It measures 35 mm without crown and a thickness of 9 mm and gets powered by Vacheron's hand-cracking caliber 466-3B. Once put on the wrist, it is really hard to take it off again. The presence, the play of light through the decorated surfaces combined with the hidden lugs makes this piece something very special. So, as we can see, the Disco Volante design is present in almost all famous brands of the 50s, 60s and 70s. But as we have learned, 
the roots go back to Ode Mapige and Gerald Genta. They are classic and simple, and yet in their own way unique and unusual with a certain twist. All details that are not immediately apparent from a distance of several meters, but only stand out the closer you get to them. So that's all from today. I hope you learned something new and had fun watching the video. Have a great day and we hope to see you in our next one.